TII, item 483, June 25th, 2019. WWDC 2019, iOS 13, iPad Pro OS 13, and much more. Since the last episode, Apple has had their annual WWDC event, and iOS 13 was introduced, as was iPad OS. Big improvements with Watch OS 6. Lots of new features to cover for all these OSs. A brief mention of iOS 12.4 beta, 4 and 5. A Kickstarter project, plus listener feedback, all covered in-depth starting after the intro. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, go away! Oh, yeah. Beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand, and that I do everything with, and has become an extension of who I am. Today's episode is brought to you by Clear. Go to clearme.com/today and use promo code today for two months of Clear for free. Today's episode is brought to you by Away. For twenty dollars off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com/tii and use promo code tii during checkout. Welcome to the show. I'm your Sprob, and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank Jeff for the music here in the background. Jeff wrote, Hi Rob, made this song called Tomorrow with my iPhone using GarageBand app. Free downloads and more. Follow me at JeffJ6 on Twitter. Guard Jeff J. Well, thanks Jeff for the music. And folks, I'll put the full song at the end of the episode. I want to thank also Ron for sending in the artwork for today's show. Ron wrote the following. Hi, Rob, I'm sending you a picture at the Apple Store in Portland I was at on business. I'm from Michigan. Sorry, I did my photo editing on a Windows 10 paint. Well, that's not exactly on an iPhone. Can't wait for your next episode. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron, for sending this in. And folks, you can see this artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button for episode 483 or at Instagram slash dot com slash today in ios and also at facebook.com slash today in ios if you have some artwork and or music that you've created on an ios device that you would like to share with the audience please email to me at today in ios at gmail.com and please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create set artwork and or music apple had their wwdc event earlier this month and i'm going to go over it as it unfolded and then afterwards get into some of the details not covered to begin with we got to see an exploding chicken head to start this WWDC event. Maybe that was Craig's way of saying no more block bucks. Followed by a video of developers. They were talking about not getting enough sleep and eating apples. Welcome to the world of podcasting. Tim Gunn comes on stage, untucked shirt. Most attendees are first time attendees, he announces. Then a quick recap on the March event and announcements. Then a sneak peek from a new show from Ronald Moore that'll be on Apple TV Plus. Giddy, 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 giddy. I am really looking forward to this. This is, anyway, it's called For All Mankind, which takes the race to the moon, and it's a little wrinkle in that the Russians landed there first, and then the Americans kept the space race going to the moon and beyond. Apple TV Plus will be out in the fall, and yeah, I'm signing up day one. By the way, if you want to hear a really good interview with Ronald Moore, back when he was executive producer and head writer of Battlestar Galactica, well, you can check out episode 148 of Podcast 411, link in the show notes. I did that interview with Ronald Moore back in spring of 2006, but definitely look forward. I'm really looking forward to this new series from him. I'm very excited. Anyway, uh, back to the event. Uh, Tim then introduced multi-user support. Yay! Next, he talked about an update to the Apple TV 4K version, which will have support for the Xbox One S controller and the PlayStation, I think it's a dual shot for controllers. That brought a real nice round of applause from the audience, more so for the uh, PlayStation controllers than the Xbox One S controllers. Next on to Apple Watch, Watch OS 6, and Kevin Lynch, shirt untucked, came out to talk Watch OS. First up is the watch faces, and they added some pretty new faces, adding also taptic chime on the hour, and you can get a little taptic hit and a musical chime uh, at the top of the hour. New audiobooks app and voice memos app and calculator and tip calculations with bill splitting. Uh, so you don't have to go out and get third-party apps to do this anymore. 
new independent standalone apps, which means you no longer need to have an iOS app. So watchOS 6 streaming audio API is available, which bringing the App Store to the Apple Watch, you can now search for and install apps right from the watch. So you don't have to do it anymore on the on the iOS watch app on your iPhone and then transfer it. You can now find and download apps directly from your Apple Watch. Uh, they've also added new health features. Watch OS 6 looks to be a big update for watch owners. So Apple Watch owners, you're going to be very happy with this, especially those of you that are us that have LTE versions. I actually broke down and, and, and went and got my Apple Watch, which was shattered. Um, I had the screen repaired for the Apple Watch. It was $349 to get the screen repaired on my Apple Watch. Eeks. Next, they brought on a doctor, which I needed when I saw the bill for the Apple Watch. Uh, she talked about activity. She introduced activity trends, which will be new. Um, adding in new hearing warning. When the sound around you is too loud, it will tell you what level the audio is at. So that's actually really nice. If you work in, in, in a normally noisy environment, it'll tell you if it gets too noisy. For women, they are adding a cycle tracking, including a fertility window. Let's get that right. <laughs> including a fertility window prediction. And this app feature will also be on the iPhone as well. Haley Allen then came out and she did a demo of Watch OS 6. Uh, you can add the loudness monitor to the watch complication. So you can actually just look down at the watch and see what the sounds are around you, how loud it is. Actually, that's nice for podcasters. So now you can look down at your watch and see, you know, is there background noise that I'm kind of subliminally blocking out? Or if I see a bunch of noise and you might know that, uh, yeah, I need to record some background noise and edit it out later. The MLB app, uh, you can tap and hear the audio from the game. And they added some new watch bands as well. You know, it's kind of the yada yada whenever they talk about watches. Tim came back out to talk about iOS. And he said 97% customer satisfaction for iOS. 85% active iOS devices have installed iOS 12. Then some digs at Android where only 10% adoption of the latest version of Android 9. Or the last version uh, of all the Android 9 versions. So oopsie. Uh, yeah, it's not very good when you have to develop for Android because almost nobody gets to the latest version. But iOS, here we are, less than 12 months out, you know, nine months out from when it released, and 85% of people are running iOS 12. Next came Craig Cluck Cluck Federici, tucked in shirt. He came out, and yes, it is called iOS 13. And unlocking with Face ID, they, he is claiming it will be 30% faster, 50% smaller apps for app downloads, and updates are 60% smaller, two times faster for app launch speed, and as expected, dark mode to iOS 13, which I've been using, and I am liking dark mode. I'm running it both on an iPhone and an iPad. And the introduction of swipe to the keyboard. And there was a lot of applause for that. Honestly, I'm just not a swiper. I've been trying to use it. It's not for me. But I know there's quite a few of you out there that love the swipe keyboard, and now that feature has been added to Apple's native keyboard. So congrats for all of you that have been holding out for that. And the addition of time-synced lyrics in the music app. Safari updates uh, quickly change text sizes now and per website preferences, where you can make certain sites request a desktop version rather than the mobile version. Mail updates uh, include getting desktop class text formatting controls, including support for rich fonts. The notes updates gets a gallery view, support for shared folders and more, and all look great in dark mode. That's one thing all the Apple apps now support dark mode. Reminders, however, major updates um, was announced for this one. So the Reminders app really got a complete rewrite of the app. Uh, simply type and, or talk to Siri or tap the new toolbar to create reminders. Siri will also suggest reminders found in messages because, you know, she likes to stick her nose into your business. You can even tag people in reminders, and next time you message with them, you will get a notification of that reminder. Maps 
details have been greatly improved, including the entire map will be updated by the end of 2019. And a person by the name of Meg came out to demo the new Apple Maps. Uh, you can now add favorites. You can make a list of favorites and share that with friends. There's a nice new street view with 3D look um, and smooth moving down a street in street view called Look Around. And you can even send an ETA notice to friends when en route to them using the map, Maps app. Next up was privacy and apps. And, and Apple talked a lot about privacy in this event. I mean, the word privacy and security and your data and your privacy was used quite often in this presentation. If you had to take a shot every time they said privacy, you would be unconscious and uh, died of blood, blood alcohol poisoning for sure. Locations now allows you just one time to add location info and require the app to ask the next time it needs location data. Background tracking warnings are now available and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth protections. I've been getting asked by apps about Bluetooth access I never thought would need it. So it's really interesting to see some of the apps that are asking for Bluetooth access. Login. Um, there's so much issues, as they pointed out, with trying to log in with like a Facebook login or a Google login with way too much info being shared. Apple solution is called Sign In with Apple. And again, lots of applause. This is to replace the horrible Facebook sign ins and the other, some of the other sign ins that you'll see out there. It's fast and easy and no tracking. And this is nice. Um, but it will require apps to add support for it. So it's not just going to automatically go out there. Apps out there are going to have to support Apple's new sign-in with Apple. So hopefully app developers get cracking on that. And if an app requests email info, you will have option to send random email addresses that redirect. And there was lots of applause on that. So yeah, that's a nice feature. You have control of your data. You have control over each of those random emails that is created for each one of those sites. So you can make it real easy. If someone starts bombarding you with junk mail, you can just kill off that one random email that was created for us for that site. Next up, they talked about HomeKit. HomeKit Secure Video, specifically, and HomeKit to the router. So Eero and Linksys be two the first. Yay, Eero. And this is going to give you more security from your um, internet-abled devices, you know, your IoT devices that are around your house, your ring doorbell, other devices, Apple's going to be locking down some of those devices, um, giving you better encryption, better security on those devices. Then they had some beauty influencers come on uh, as Anna... Mo wait, no, can't say the A word. Um, they introduced some new Moji stickers. Next was photos, and there's a new effect called high key mono. This is in portrait mode, and you're going to scroll all the way over to the end, and you'll see the one called high key mono. There's new editing features and the UI. They've they've changed around how you do editing, and they bring the editing features to video as well. And now you can rotate a video and apply filters and more. Lots of filters and effects added to iOS 13 Photos app, plus a new way to browse photos using AI to remove duplicates. Overall, lots of updates there. Uh, they had Justin TD, shirt untucked. He came out to demo the photo app. Um, the new organization of the photos is really nice, and zooming in and out of all the photos is much faster and smoother. So overall, lots of good updates to the photo app. Uh, no real hint of what might be coming with iOS or the next iPhone with regards to iOS 13, but at least... What was released now does make the photo app even more usable and being able to get to your apps or your photos much easier. Next came out Stacy to talk about what is new for the AirPod for features. And Siri can read incoming messages as they come in and you can reply. Uh, called uh, announced message. And you can now do audio sharing with a tap between two iOS devices. This feature was actually called squirting. I kid you not, when the Zoom did it. Yes, squirting. Audio sharing sounds a wee bit better. Per HomePod, uh, they're bringing handoff to HomePod. Just bring your iPhone next to your HomePod 
and the podcast or music starts playing on it and vice versa. HomePod can learn who in your family is, is talking and customize responses for them. And then next, she talked about CarPlay. 90% of cars sold in the U.S. support it. CarPlay has been updated and works with third-party apps. And uh, then there's Siri Shortcuts. And in iOS 13, Siri Shortcuts is native, and they help you make it easy to create new shortcuts. Uh, Siri Voice will be all digital, and it should be smoother and less cutting. and actually is. It does sound much, much better. Might have to reduce some of my classic Siri questions coming up on future Ask Siri segments because it really does sound much better. They also had a bunch of other features they flashed on the screen they did not get to, which we'll be talking about over the next few months. Some of the, the key ones, in my opinion, were manage Apple IDs for business. Um, and you also have the ability now to have multiple Apple IDs so you can switch between your business Apple ID and your personal one. Block sender in mail, which is nice to have that. Wi-Fi selection from Control Center, which I've used multiple times. It's really nice now. You can just go to Control Center, find Wi-Fi, and then you can find the Wi-Fi you want to get to. You don't have to go back into the settings app and find it that way. Bluetooth wireless splitter. Siri suggestions in Apple Podcasts, which I'm looking forward to testing out. Optimized battery charging. We will talk about that later in the episode. That was one I want to really get into and folder management in notes, and plus lots, lots more. And a lot of them, they flashed up there, but those were some of the ones that, to me, seemed the most important. Before we get into the rest of the WWDC, I want to take a word here for our sponsor. And as you know from listening to the show, and lately because of a lack thereof of new episodes, I have to travel for work, sometimes a lot, lately a lot. In the first five months of this year, I hit the A-list status on Southwest, and will blow through A-list um, preferred status by October. Traveling is full of anxiety and stress, as you know, if you've ever traveled, if you have to travel a lot. And today's sponsor helps in reducing some of that stress and anxiety, and that is Clear. With Clear, you reduce anxiety by being your own ID. If you lose your ID or your ID expires on you and you weren't paying attention, it's okay, because you use your eyes or your fingertips that get you through security similar to unlocking your iOS device. And with Clear, you are expedited through security process, getting you to your gate even faster, and that's a big stress reliever in itself. Clear is the absolute best way to get through airport security. It works great with pre-check or two. Right now, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Please go to clearme.com slash today and use promo code today. That's C-L-E-A-R-M-E dot com slash today and use promo code today for your free two months of clear. You create your account online before going to the airport, then finish enrolling when you get there with the help of a clear ambassador at the airport. I went through this process at the Las Vegas airport. It took less than five minutes for the whole process and I've used clear at the Austin and Saint Ho uh, San Jose airports in the last month. It really does lower the stress level and you can use clear not just at airports. Clear helps you get through security faster in over 40 airports and stadiums around the country with more being added all the time. Again, for me, the part where you are the ID is the biggest anxiety reliever. I have seen people at airports breaking down and crying because they lost their ID and were going to miss their flight home. That's why I, I try to carry extra ID with me when I travel. But if they are all lost or stolen my extra ID, I would still be able to get home with Clear. Again, go to clearme.com slash today and use promo code today to get two months free. Next up from WWDC is the iPad. And a video to start the intro to the iPad OS. First up, tighter grid of apps, and you can put widgets right on the home screen. You slide over, you can switch between apps and see past ones. Split view, you can do two windows of the same app. For example, two notes for you know, have them right side by side, or two pages have them right side by side. It makes it really easy when you're typing something up, looking at some other notes that you've made. And this also works for third-party apps, Word docs right next to each other. The file app is improved for and has better folder sharing that is now supported. And now 
plug-in thumb drives are supported in the Files app, as are SD cards. So you can pull that SD card out of your Zoom H6 and bring it right over to your iPad for editing the audio. Or the SD card from the camera, you can bring that over for the photos and videos for editing of those. Plus, there's also direct import from a camera. You can connect your camera right in and now and bring the photos and videos over that way. You can zip and unzip files. There are search suggestions. And all iPadOS is moving the iPad closer to your desktop laptop than it's ever been. Speaking of which, in Safari, there is now desktop class browsing, as rumored, and as comes to it finally, and it works with Safari, and it now um, a download manager has been added to, as well. So that's really nice. So again, we're making it closer and closer to a desktop device with these little incremental steps that the iPad OS is taking. Uh, they've added custom fonts. There's three-finger copy and three-finger paste. Uh, three finger swipe to undo. So they've added some gestures to make uh, just editing and everything that you do on a day to day basis simpler and smoother and faster. Apple Pe Pencil, they've updated that. So the latency is down from 20 milliseconds to 9 milliseconds. iPad OS has been redesigned um, with a new Apple Pencil palette. And uh, they had Tony Patterson then come out untucked. He showed a demo, and the new compact keyboard, uh, use a two-finger pinch on the keyboard, very nice. You can also use Apple Pencil to mark up anything. Uh, so a lot of great new features that have come to iPadOS. Uh, Tim came back, and then it was Mac time. Uh, out came Colin, shirt untucked, and you talk about the new Mac Pro. I'll not go over it other than to say, if you do video editing, you'll love it. And if you live in Wisconsin, you are really, really going to love it because the external design was inspired by a cheese grater. Women came out to talk about the new display for the new Mac and the 6K display with a million to one contrast ratio. The Pro Display XDR stands for Extreme HDR, and it can even rotate for portrait mode, which is really cool until you find out the price of the stand. Uh, Colin came back to wrap it up. Pricing for the new Mac Pro starts at $599. The display will be $499, but the stand for the display is $999. So yes, the stand for the display is another $1,000 or more than a Mac, um, iPad Pro or low-end MacBooks. There were some boos and a lot of grumbles in the audience when the pricing for the pro stand was announced. They goofed that, fumbled that, and uh, roll out incredible. I mean, it, Apple, you know, Steve Jobs would never have introduced it like that. Sorry, just never would have. Uh, the way they introduced it and, and the reaction from the crowd is like, they just did not get it. Sorry, just the way it was. Tim came back to talk about Mac OS. Craig came back, um, and then it was, Mac OS is now going to be called Catalina. iTunes was up first, and they are splitting it into three apps, as had been rumored, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. So iTunes is deadish. Not, you know, I mean, you have to upgrade to Catalina to kill it, but once you do upgrade to Catalina, iTunes will be split in three. Apple Podcasts search will be adding indexed based on context but only for the top shows and eventually they'll work their way down but only for the top shows to start with something new sidecar and that's where you can use an ipad as a second display for your mac that'll be supported in catalina with ios 13 or ipad os 13 Accessibility is now broken out as its own app um, on iOS. I didn't mention that earlier, or its own area and settings. So you can have a whole accessibility adder area. And then with accessibility, they added on the Mac um, and iOS voice control to Mac and iOS. Uh, voice control can give you control of an iOS device and Mac with just your voice. And they have uh, rich dictation and editing. Find my app now combines find my iphone and find my friends so now it's just find my yes i don't think it sounds great either 
but it is what it is. And basically, they just took find my iPhone, find my friends, and smashed into one app. This finds devices that are asleep, kind of. You still have to have sent out some information. And it uses Bluetooth data that is encrypted. Project Catalyst helps bring iOS apps over to the Mac. So there's some, you know, again, we're seeing the merging between the two. Craig came back and he started talking about Swift, the Swift UI, new framework, um, built in Swift for Swift, um, better apps, less code. As you edit code, you can actually now see instant updates in the preview. That got a nice round of applause. They added a WYSIWYG editor. Dev seemed to be very, very happy with the Swift announcements. So all in all, if you're a developer and using Swift, you will be happy with the new round of Swift. Tim came back to wrap up everything. Um, betas were available on June 3rd to devs. Public seeds will be available. Well, they said originally July, but there's some are saying that they're coming out now for the public testers. iOS 13 beta 2 is already out. That is the first one that I'm using. And I will say it has been pretty stable, especially for a second beta of a no dot update. Still remember, folks, beta equals bugs, and nothing has more bugs than the first few betas of a no dot update. So don't update your main device if you really need it and if you can avoid doing it. I did it because I wanted to get to see the dark mode and, and use it on a regular basis. So this time through, I actually did update my iPhone. I took the chance and they updated to iOS 13. I'm on beta 2. Again, knock on wood, it's been pretty pretty stable. And I've heard some good feedback from other users. That was the, what really pushed me over to use it was the initial feedback I got from some of you. So thank you folks uh, that had sent in your feedback about how stable it was because I'm seeing that stability as well. That said, beta equals bugs and I do not recommend you putting it on your main device. We're going to go ahead and jump into some voicemail feedback on some thoughts about WWDC. Hello, Rob. I'm going to give my WWC impressions. I thought it was a much bigger, a lot more announcements than I expected that I was surprised by. Number one, I'm finally glad I get to retire Gboard as my main keyboard choice because I much prefer having a swipe option. Now that it'll be on the Apple keyboard, it's finally <laughs> going to be on the native keyboard. I don't have any reason to use Gboard anymore, which makes me happy. Because having the third-party keyboard is always a little bit not quite right, even though I think it's gotten better over, over time. I'll just say, very happy about that. That's my number one takeaway. Dark mode I'm excited for, but I think it's going to be, looks like a really solid iOS 13. A little bit more changes than I was expecting, and very happy that the swipe keyboard is coming. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye. Justin, thanks for your feedback as always. And I agree with you. I, I think it was a much more solid update with iOS 13 than I was expecting, especially when you look at the iPad OS features. So overall, I was very happy with the announcement of WWDC. I've been happy with playing around with iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 betas. And I'll send it out to you folks. If anyone's playing around with it or watch the, the keynote, what are your thoughts? What did you like most about the keynote, what do you like most about iOS 13 and iPad OS 13? What are your favorite new features? Give us a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206 Moon Dog, or shoot an email to today in iOS at gmail.com. One of the first items I want to talk about from iOS 13 is if you go to the settings app, then battery, then battery health, you will see a new item called optimized battery charging. I mentioned it briefly earlier. I said we were going to talk about it now, and we're talking about it now. This is turned on by default. This is why your iOS device running iOS 13 will seem to take a longer time to get from 80% charged to 100% charged. Apple's putting AI to use and figuring out when you charge your phone, and then they will trickle charge or slow charge it the last 20% of the way as a method to help extend the battery life. I mean, who cares about the battery life long term, right? We're just going to pass it on to someone else. Let the battery issue be their thing. But we, Mr. or Mrs. Update every year, don't really care long term. We just want the satisfaction of a 100% charged message that brings to us a, a, a 
feeling of euphoria. And we want it as quickly as possible. And aren't we all just so in the moment? What about right now? Why can't we just charge it now to 100%? Well, actually, we can, sort of. We just need to turn that toggle off. So there. Again, go to settings, go to battery, then go to where it says um, battery health, and then you're going to see an option called optimized battery charging. If you don't want this, you can turn it off. It is turned on by default. But in all fairness, I am sure more than a few people will write up posts in September or in October about iOS 13 taking longer to charge to 100%. Yes. Yes, it will take longer. It's a feature, not a bug. There is an article, I'll put a link in the show notes for episode 483, that has me a little baffled. Seems this article, and one other that I found at least, probably because of this article, say there is a shortcut that will allow you to schedule text messages on the iPhone. It says the new shortcut apps, the shortcuts, shortcuts app? Yeah, we'll go with that. And if in, in there, you go to the gallery, and then you find something called delayed time message. Uh, it's a shortcut. And you find that in the shortcuts gallery. Again, you tap to get it, and then download and install. Except I cannot find it. If anyone has had any luck finding this shortcut, and again, it's called delayed time message, iMessage, um, let us know. 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Again, link in the show notes, and the title of it is iPhones Now Let You Schedule Your Text Messages. And I really hope it's true, but I can't find it. So maybe it was something that was there and has been yanked since then but right now it's not available apple also released ios 12.4 betas 4 and 5 since the last episode with beta 5 going live this week reality is no one is reporting any new features in the first five betas for this most speculation is ios 12.4 had hidden features that are geared towards the upcoming apple card credit card and these hidden features will unveil themselves once the apple card is released to the masses which Apple said would be sometime this summer. Maybe it'll be early in the summer rather than September 20th. In other words, this update, though, is pretty boring update so far with iOS 12.4. But that's okay. We can use a little boring uh, update every now and then. For the question on the last episode from Jason where he asked if there was an assistive touch shortcut for shutting the iPhone, we had a few replies. Here's some of them via voicemail. Hello, Rob. It's Kevin in Kansas City. Your caller on episode 482 referencing using the accessibility soft button on the screen and wanting to shut down his phone. Yes, it does shut down your phone. You use the soft button called lock screen, which looks like a padlock. And if you long press on the lock button, it will pop up your shutdown slider. So you can do that with the accessibility button. Okay, thanks. Hey, Rob, this is Philip in Green Bay. Go Pack Go. Episode 482, the question about shutting down your iPhone using accessibility features. If nobody's already called in, um, what you do is you press and you hold down on the lock button, and then it'll pop up and it'll let you shut down. had to use this uh, myself when an older phone, uh, the power button, totally fried. Yeah, a lot better than force resetting or waiting for the battery to die. Hey, take care. Go back. Go. Bye. Bill and Kevin, thank you for your feedback. Well, it seems this long press on the lock button does not work on the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 10s Max or any iPhone running iOS 12 and iOS 13 if there's no home button. So basically any of the iPhone 10 series, iOS 12 and 13, Uh, It doesn't seem to work. It seems only to work on iPhones that have an actual physical home button. There were a couple of emails here on this as well. Let me read a couple of those. Hello, Rob. You can shut down the iPhone in software. Go to Settings, General, and at the very bottom, you'll find Shut Down. Hope this helps. Thanks for your do. Really enjoy the show. Regards, another RW. And, hi, Rob. The only way I've found to shut down the iPhone or other iOS device is to go to Settings, then go to General, 
then go to the very bottom of general there is a shutdown button option there it isn't the most convenient but it is the only way i've seen to do this software shutdown assistive touch does not offer this it's only offers a restart great show keep up the great work regards tom long island new york well thanks all that sent in the responses and jason in short if you have an iphone with a home button you can long press on the lock icon in assistive touch but if you have an iphone 10 variant then nope you just need to go to settings general scroll down and then select shut down so there's ways to do it either one but you have to do it different ways depending on if or if not there is actual physical home button. We are happy to have Away sponsoring us again. To save $20 on a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com slash TII and use promo code TII. Away sent me their original carry-on bag a couple years ago. And as I said before, I loved it. Actually, I loved it so much that when they introduced the larger carry-on bag, I gave the first one to my wife and purchased the larger one for myself. Yes, I put my money where my mouth is. It has a battery pack right under the handle that will charge your iPhone multiple times. The best part is you can be charging it as you're walking through the airport and waiting online or walking around a conference. And if it even pops out for easy recharging or to keep it charging your iPhone when you place it the bag in the overhead or if they require you to remove the battery, um, you can pop it right out. The Away Carry-On meets one of my key requirements in a suitcase wheels under all four corners and it swivels 360 degrees that makes it really easy to get down the aisle when you're getting in and out of the plane smooth flow in in the airport or around conference halls it has double wheels under each corner something i really like it is lightweight very very durable comes with a lifetime warranty if anything breaks they will fix or replace it for you for life and there is a hundred day trial if it's not for you, then just return it for a full refund, no questions asked. I love when a company stands behind their product like that. The Away bag comes in a really nice laundry bag when they ship it to you, which is inside a box. And on the inside, there is a bag for your shoes as well. They really looked at all the details and making the best carry-on bag I've ever owned or seen. Even the shipping box has a nice Away travel artwork on the inside. Very, very Apple-ish. In addition to the two carry-on sizes, they also have a mid-size and a large check-in suitcase, but only the carry-ons have the battery packs. They come in many different colors, and I'm sure there is one to match your style. Plus, they just added a nice day bag called the Everywhere Bag, which is a really nice complement to the carry-on suitcase. To save $20 on a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com slash TII, and use promo code TII. Again, awaytravel.com slash TII and use promo code TII to save $20. Oh, Rob, it's Daniel, not from Peterborough, but from Wisbeach in Cambridge Shire. Three things to talk about. The first is Apple Arcade, Apple TV, and the Apple Podcast app. The first thing I want to talk about is Apple TV. I'm going to go out and get one. Um, I hope this is IRS related. I presume it is because I want 4K content. And I'm just so pleased to announce that I have just been granted 44 meg download. Now, you over there might not think 44 meg downloads a lot. But trust me, in the UK, that basically puts me in the upper tier of broadband speed availability. Apple Podcast app is frustrating beyond belief. Content unavailable or podcast unavailable is something I keep seeing whenever I try to uh, try to play it. So I decided to download something called, is it Overcast, which is another podcast app, everything is perfect. But while I was dossing about in the old app store, I happened upon an app called TII. I thought, I recognize that name, downloaded it. You never told me you had an app, a podcast app. Well, it's fantastic. You can see videos, you can see PDF. I don't know why I'm telling you about this because obviously you know it must be associated with you. It's your name. Well, anyway, I like that app. I downloaded that app and I'm very happy with that app. You should say about it more often. I can't believe it. I've been following you for what now? Four years? You've probably been doing this for about, what, five years, six years maybe? 
Yeah, probably longer than that. But anyway, I've discovered it now. I've, I've downloaded the app. Everybody, including my mate, is it Mark or Matt from Peterborough? I've got no idea. I have a lot of fans. I can't keep track of all of them. You should go and download the TII app right now. Forget the Apple Podcast app. In fact, forget all the other podcasts. They don't matter. TII is where it's at. Rob, as always, love the show, love the face, and love the app. <laughs> have a nice day. Well, Daniel, thank you for the voicemail feedback. And per the TI app, you mean mention it more often, like at the end of each and every episode? Mm, I should think about that. Okay, done. I just mentioned it at the end of every episode going back eight plus years. I think actually the app's been out for nine years. And we've been doing the podcast for 12 years, something like that. So maybe the app's 10 years old. Um, But the podcast uh, is... By the way, Daniel launched in 2007, April 2007. So we're actually over 12 years old. And I, I think the app came out two years later. So the app is over 10 years old now. So yes, um, we have it. And actually do mention it at the end of each episode. Just saying. I've got an iPhone 7 and an iPhone iPad 6th gen. I just wondered, is there any way that I could uh, get a wireless charging system for it? Because at the moment I've got so many charging leads and somehow the Bluetooth keeps dropping off. If you could help me with an answer, that'd be great. It's John Petrie from Sydney, Australia. Thank you. Hi, John. Thanks for the voicemail message. And the short answer is you need to find a case for your iPhone 7 that you can put it in, and the case can then be wirelessly charged. So there are cases out there for the iPhone 7. You just have to look for iPhone 7 wireless charging case. You then plug your iPhone into that, and then the case is what gets wirelessly charged, and that charges the iPhone. Uh, Look for one that has a battery pack, so you're wirelessly charging the battery pack that's then charging your phone. So if you're gonna put a case on it, you might as well get one that gives you a little bit of extra battery power and can also be wirelessly charged. But they are out there. Uh, If you go to Amazon or anywhere, you should be able to find a wireless charging case for your iPhone 7. But there's no other way to do it other than getting that case for it. And by the way, Mophie has one. I think it's a Charge Force which allows you to do the wireless charging and as a battery pack. So Mophie has one I know that's out there that's been well-reviewed. Back to the email bag. Hi, Rob. Hope all is well with you and your family. I am curious to know what you and your listeners use as a primary password manager. Do you use iCloud Keychain or a third-party option such as 1Password? Regards, Steve from Brisbane. Steve, I personally use the iCloud Keychain, but I'm going to open it up to listeners. Folks, what do you use as your password manager? Give us a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOON-DOG. Or shoot an email to todayinios at gmail.com. Back to the email bag. Hi, Rob. Really enjoy TII. Thanks for producing it. I was wondering if you had any insight on whether Apple will bring back an iPod like the Shuffle or the Nano. Would love to hear any info you have on that topic. Regards, Josh. Hi, Josh. I do not have any insight. Nope. Uh, Do I think... They will bring back any of the iPads or iPods, I should say. No, I do not think so. But in fairness, I did not think they would update the iPod Touch, and they did. So maybe my opinion here is one you have to take with a grain of salt. But again, I do not see any updates to slash new iPods coming out anytime soon. Really no need for any of them with Apple Watch and AirPods working together like an old iPod. Sure, pricing is much more, but that probably hurts the chance of a new iPod mini or shuffle more than anything else. Again, I just do not see the reason why Apple would release a new iPod beyond what they just did with the iPod Touch. And, of course, I have no insight on this. Hi, Rob. This is Alex from Walnut Creek, and I have a problem that started recently after update to 1231. I'm connected to my uh, car adopter in uh, Infinity, the iPod adopter, and if I use Siri shortcuts, my phone freezes. And I would like to see if any listeners had that kind of problem. Phone just freezes when you're trying to use Siri. And I have to do hard reset, and then it starts to work again. And then freezes again if I use it later after some time. Thank you for the show, and I'm looking forward to more feedback. Thank you. Bye-bye. Alex, thanks for calling in. And folks, if you can help Alex out, if you've had your phone freezing like that using Siri... Give us a call, 
six three six four. There's two oh six Moon Dog or shoot an email to today and iOS at gmail.com. We have a Kickstarter project to talk about. This one is called Power One, the number one power one, one word, no space. And it is, quote, a power management and protection system that ensures your devices are always with you, charged and ready to use, unquote. And well, if that sounds like a charging case for both your iPhone and AirPods, bingo, you are correct. The one case for both. Right now, there are less than 20 left at the early bird rate of $94 US. Delivery is estimated for October 2019, but it is a Kickstarter project, so take that with a grain of salt. They have a goal of 20K and have raised 17K so far. This one has until Saturday, July 27th at 9.02 a.m. Central Time to get funded. So yeah, no issue with this one getting funded well before then. The case has two different charging modes. Mode 1 charges just your AirPods. Mode 2 charges both your AirPods and your iPhone. They have versions for all iPhone 10 models and it supports both versions of the AirPods. They have a white and they have a black model, and those are the only two colors you get. For the iPhone 10 and 10s, you get 34 hours of additional talk time. For the 10R, you get 41 hours more talk time, and for the 10s Max, you get 40 hours more talk time. Those are all greater than what Apple offers in their cases. Search for Power One at kickstarter.com or in the show notes for episode 483 of TII. One more email here before we start wrapping things up. Hi Rob, Dan from Vancouver, Washington again. My daughter is off to WSU in the fall to join the family tradition of being a cougar. We have been looking at getting her a new MacBook for college. What do you or are your listeners recommending? I was thinking of a new MacBook Air because they are light and easy to pack around. My daughter is thinking she wants and needs a MacBook Pro. She will be talking a lot, taking a lot of math and science classes since she is working on becoming a veterinarian. Is there a new MacBook Pro coming out before fall? I hate buying a new device and then two months later they come out with a new model. Thanks for any advice. Love the show. Sent for my iPad, Dan Garvey. Dan, first off, congrats on getting your daughter out to college. And for what she needs, it really comes down to what can you afford. If you can afford the MacBook Pro, it's going to be a better device. It's going to last her longer, get a good amount of storage on it. Is Apple going to come out with a new device? Well, the latest rumor mill is there may be a new MacBook in September, October time frame. That's going to be after she's already at college. So she's going to need it before then. They did just update the latest MacBook Pro with a new processor recently. So you may want to go with that one. But it is going to be uh, on the pricier side. You know, to get the MacBook Pro set up with good amount of storage, you're going to be looking at close to $4,000. So the MacBook Pro is expensive, especially if you give it a good amount of storage, which I would recommend, you know, always come... Not, maxing out the macbook pro but at least going to two terabytes on a macbook pro if you're going to buy one today each year i like to sit down with the new betas and then the last version of ios and go side by side on what changed starting in the settings app and then into the individual apps as we work out this year will be a little tougher as we're going from ios to ipad os for the ipads i'll start with the iphones and then go to the ipads giving a top-down changes for those sight impaired. I hope this helps you find where things were moved to along with what was added. Let's start first with iOS on the iPhone. And I'm looking at iOS 12.3.1 on the iPhone 10 versus iOS 13 beta 2 on the iPhone 10s Max. Going into the settings app, the first new items section that you see listed in the settings app is accessibility. This was added between display and brightness and wallpaper. Next new one added is measure. Then um, shortcuts and health also added in that same section. So you have measure, shortcuts, and health. Then in the next section, it shows iTunes U was added, but I've seen iTunes U in, in, on, on the iPad. So I don't think that was really added. For some reason, it must have just I must have just deleted it off of the other device. But... What we're looking at here really is four things that changed. Accessibility was broken out of general. It's 
its own section. So all those accessibility features have been moved out to their own little section out of general. And then we have the measure app brought in there along with shortcuts and health. So those are the ones that were added into iOS 13 as sections under settings. The next episode, we're going to dig in a little deeper into what else changed as we get into each section as we go down that list and, and spending quite a bit of time going over the accessibility section. Do you like swimming? Sure. I have to know what to talk about when I show up the next day at the virtual assistant's raw data cooler. Do you like swimming? Of course. I never miss a chance to apply subjective regionally based significance to a series of weighted probability exercises. Go team. Do you like swimming? Definitely. I like all the sports I support. Now let's go exhort with your cohort. For $20 off a suitcase, please visit awaytravel.com slash TII and use promo code TII when you check out. Thanks, Away, for supporting this show. And before we go today, I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Or record your feedback and email it to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or comment for something someone said on this episode, or it can be a question or rant you have about something else, an app or product view, good or bad, as long as it is iOS related, it is welcomed. Always looking for new artwork to feature that you created on an iOS device. Just put some TII branding on it and send it in. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on an iOS device to play on the show. It's your show and your feedback is greatly desired. Also, don't forget to check out our moderated me we community by going to todayinios.com slash community and when you go there we need you to request to be added i have two questions the first one seems to be quickly weeding out the android fanboys i ask which is the better os ios or android and the idiot android fanboys can't bring themselves to say ios they say either both or android and instantly they are rejected so yeah, it's a nice, safe, Android fanboy-free zone that you can ask questions or post articles about pretty much anything Apple-related. A quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need the five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com and please include a 60-second or less audio review of your app or iBook indicating you are the dev or the author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. Once again, today's episode was sponsored by Clear. Clear is the absolute best way to get through airport security. Right now, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Please go to Clear me.com slash today and use promo code today that's c-l-e-a-r-m-e dot com slash today promo code today for your free two months of clear finally check out the tii app which is free to you daniel search for tii in the itunes app store it is the best way to consume the show and to get push notifications each time a new episode of TI is released. It's fully voiceover friendly, of course. Please go right now and download the TI app or get the update. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to phone different. This show is hosted on Lipson.com and part of the Lipson Media Network. If you are looking for podcast hosting, go to Lipson.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com for hosting for your podcast and creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can be found everywhere you listen to podcasts. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Overcast, Stitcher, and everywhere else you listen to audio.